in our hands Holding in the light within While the world is waiting Watching for the evidence of What we say is true And they know in a church that was uh it was pretty sleepy i mean it just wasn't a whole lot of stuff going on in that church that was all that exciting to me as a kid you know so i had an appreciation for the hymns the the older songs of the church and um and i just loved them you know i i had no idea what what they were about necessarily but i i loved the fact that uh, the, the songs meant something to me just from a musical standpoint i guess is what i'm getting at and so uh i heard this one when i was a bit older after i lights went on in my head and I started realizing who Jesus was and what he was about. But uh, this became one of my very, very favorites. Uh, it's a song called When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. When I survey the
I remember it was a, a number of years ago uh, now, but I was singing at a church up in uh, Seattle, Washington. And for some reason, th these guys are doing a great job. The worship team was up there. I was going to do some specials, you know, for the service. And these guys were, you know, leading people in worship and stuff. And, and they were singing a song that basically the, the lyrical content was, you know, that we want to see your face. We want to just, you know, be in your presence and all this, that type of idea. And for some reason, I got the giggles. I'm sitting in the front row, right? And they're just, they're just pouring their hearts out. They're doing such a good job. And I start cracking up because I got this visual of what that would actually look like if God granted their desire. You know, the Bible clearly says that no man has seen the face of God and lived, right? So what they're really saying is God show up and kill us all where we're sitting. <laughs> So I just started seeing little piles of ash form, like the, you know, poof, and the bass would fall, and poof, drumsticks, poof, the microphones, and, and I, I, I just started, I was cracking up. Well, the, the guy leading worship was, you know, like I said, he was giving his all. He was doing a great job, nothing wrong with what he was doing. But I was busted up, and he was like. <laughs> and when he got done, I, you know, and I did my songs, and he came up and goes, okay, so what was that all about? And I explained to him what I was seeing and, you know, how funny I thought it was. He didn't see the humor in it at all, so <laughs> kind of got lost on him, but whatever. But this song actually talks about 
the one thing that I want, the one thing I seek is to, is to dwell in his presence and to see him, you know, and if that means that I have to die for that to happen, then whatever. But, I, you know, I, I, I'm longing for that day. And this song talks about that a little bit. It's called There's One Thing. There's one thing that I need, one thing that I seek, to dwell in your presence all my days. There is one thing that I need, one thing will I seek, to gaze upon the splendor of your face.
this next song is a song that um, I actually wrote. It was a weird. Usually I have an idea about what I want to write about. Like, I, okay, it's going to be about this topic. But I actually started getting lyrics, and they were just in a rhyming form. And I thought, well, that's really beautiful imagery. But I, I had no idea what I was really writing about yet, if that makes sense. I st started writing the first verse. And it wasn't until I got way into this song that I realized, oh, my gosh, this, I realized that it was the Lord's heart toward Jonah when he was in the belly of the fish. I thought, man, that's, that's weird. I mean, the song's not called the song about Jonah and the belly of the fish, but it made me start really thinking about how, you know, God was with him at the darkest time in his life, literally. He was, he was trying to run from God, and yet God made a way for him, and God was with him, even, even though he probably didn't think so at the time, you know. You get swallowed by a fish, you're thinking, I'm pretty much done here. But uh, God was with them. And so I don't know, maybe you're facing something right now where you feel like you're just stuck in a dark place and you're not hearing God's voice right now. Maybe you're struggling with depression or struggling with a financial issue or struggling with a relationship with a family member, whatever it is. God sees that situation. He, he wants to speak into your life and, and help you with that. Cry out to him with that and give that thing to him, whatever it is. And I, I can assure you that he will meet you where you are. He's a faithful God and he loves us and he wants to give good gifts to his children. So anyway, that's kind of what this song is about. Even though darkness falls, are we still going to trust that he's there? And uh, this song is called uh, Even Now.
People ask me a lot, like, you know, when you write, how do you, how do you get songs? Do you get like lyrics first or do you get a melody? Do you get an, you know, an idea? What, what, what makes you tick that way? <laughs> you don't want to know. No. But um, I really don't have any particular way of writing. Um, I've done it weird ways before. I've, I've recorded, I remember going into the studio one time and recording 10 tracks of music. No lyrics to anything. I just had a melody. And I knew I was going to, I guess this one's going to have three verses and a chorus, and then it's going to have a bridge, and then it's going to chorus out. And then I would put words to it later, after the track was done. Weird. Because you talk about paint yourself into a corner, that's pretty much doing it right there. Everybody's home. You can't add a bass track. You know, you're done. So, uh, and then other times I, I, I write with just, you know, lyrics. I have a melody idea, but usually it's a, you know, a lyrical content. But it's awesome. Anyway, but... So I was in the shower, I was taking a shower, and I said, God, I really don't feel like going into the studio today and writing. I just don't feel like it. I didn't have it, you know? And so I just started, I said, God, I need you to consume me so that what I write, what you give me is what you want to have written, if that makes sense. And just that idea of God consuming, and then all of a sudden I had a song. So it was like, I had a song halfway done before I got out of the shower. It's like, awesome, <laughs> dry it off, you know? And then I wrote the other half of it in, Anchorage, Alaska over Thanksgiving. Oh, it was cold. <laughs> anyway, this is a cool song. It's called Consume Me.
I had a friend of mine who, um, a dear couple, they had a child that had some medical issues who ended up passing away pretty young. The kid was like seven, I think. And um, the mom asked me if I would sing at her service. And of course, you know, it's one thing if you don't know the people, it's still difficult. But when they're good friends of yours, you know, it's, oh, man. So I said, well, yes, of course I will, you know. So I said, but I, I need you to come and help me pick out a song and, uh, to sing. And she goes, okay. So I sang her a few things at my house. She came by one day, and I sang some stuff for her. She was like, well, that's nice. Yeah, no, that's nice. And I felt like the Lord kept saying, I want you to sing the song that you don't have finished yet. That's the one I want you to sing for her. And I went, and I'm one of those artist type people. I don't like people seeing my stuff till it's like, perfect. You know, it's like, you know, because I always make the excuses. Well, we're going to do this yet. And we're going to, you know, it's not just, I can't just play something for somebody. It's got to be all, you know, propped up. But uh, so I said, well, here's this one song. I'm not really done with it yet. But, you know, and I sang her part of it. And she's like, yeah, that's it. That's the one. Like, oh. So I did it. I sang it at the service in all of its incompleteness. And later on, went ahead and finished it. But this song is pretty cool. Um, it just talks about the Lord, you know, being, being our comfort and that, you know, there's a scripture that talks about, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. And that's basically really what this song is based on. Um, I think we need to do that from time to time. We get our eyes on our own situations and all the stuff that we go through. And sometimes we just have to put it down and say, God, what do you have for me? I'm, I'm going to look to you for strength and guidance through all of this. And, and I'm going to try to, I'm not going to, I'm going to stop trying to figure it all out myself, but I need your help with this. You know, we are, we should be dependent on what God does for us. And a lot of us aren't, we're very independent. And so this song is a real reminder to me that, you know, when troubles circle me, <laughs> I need to put my eyes on him. This song is called, I will lift up my eyes. My comfort 
You know, there's a lot of scriptures that uh, talk about that the, it, it provides imagery of, of God and what he's like. You know, like uh, we hide under the shadow of the Almighty's wings. You know, well, you know, sounds like a bird, you know, but or the, the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous run into. You know, so we have these kind of visual, verbal visuals, if you will, of, of God and what he's like. And I think some of us, uh, we think that we, we don't have a place of refuge here. We have to wait till we go be with them in heaven and then, you know, it's all good. But there's enough scripture, and I've found this to be true in my own life, that when I cry out to God, he, he provides a shield. He provides a place for me to hide. If I need healing, he provides that time for healing. If I need grace, he provides grace. But he, he's all these things to us. And we can have those things now. We can find peace. We can find, you know, that, that strong tower, literally, that we can run into. We can find that now. We don't have to wait for the great by and by. And uh, I think this song kind of touches on that in a, in a really beautiful way. It was uh, written by a good friend of mine by the name of Shannon Wexelberg. And uh, I've, I really I enjoy this song. I hope you do too. It's called You Are My Refuge.
This, uh, this next song, I wrote this one um, very differently than I've probably written anything else because it took me about three years to get the song done. And uh, it was interesting because I, I, got, I got the idea for the song and I wrote down actually the second verse. It ended up being the second verse first. Um, and then I, try, I thought, oh, it's song day, you know, because a lot of times I get an idea for a song and I just bang them out. My wife's like, really? I go, but it's hard. Anyway, but, uh, but it, I, I tried to write, and, and it just, nothing came, and it, was, it wasn't any good. The ideas just didn't go with what I had written. But the Lord was bringing me through a process during the writing of this song, and he kept bringing me back to the foot of the cross, and he kept showing me different aspects of what he's done for me for those three years while I was writing this song, and this song is called Bring Me to the Cross, right? And... I, I just think it was, a, it was something that he didn't want to just give to me. He wanted me to experience something. And so I did. And boy, it was, and I still am. I, you know, there's no graduates from the school of the cross, you know. Um, it just doesn't happen. You just keep learning stuff about it. But uh, the Lord definitely showed me some revelation about, about what, what he did for me. And, and so this song is probably one of my favorites that I've ever written just because of what the Lord worked in me. So my prayer for you tonight is that, you know, I, I pray that you will get out of the listening of this song what God was able to work into my heart through the writing of it. Uh, this song is called Bring Me to the Cross.
Lord, thank you, for, thank you for dying on the cross for us, all of us in this room, all of us around the world, God. Thank you for making a way that we can cry out to you and be forgiven of our sins, that we can be reunited to you because of what you've done for us. We thank you for that, Jesus. Amen. Uh, this, uh, it, you know what? I've loved being with you guys. I'm going to sing one more song, and um, it's been fun, so... I don't know what to tell you. But it's... Uh, this song is a, a song that came in two parts, basically. I had, uh, I had, well, let, let me start over. We, we were trying to sell our house in Texas. We were moving from Texas because I got tired of the chiggers and the ticks and the mosquitoes and the moccasins and the copperheads, and the, you know, fire ants humidity, you know, just stuff. And I wanted to go someplace that was drier, so I ended up moving to Colorado, which moved there in 98. And I love it. Oh, it's, cost. it's great. Um, but, so anyway, we were trying to sell our house, and I remember um, telling my wife, you know, it's like, wow, you know, no one's looking at our house. You know, we had a real estate person that was in charge of all that, and, and just no one was coming through. We had a couple of looky-loos or whatever, but no, nobody's serious. And so I started really kind of in my heart, I was grumbling and complaining a bit about all that. And the Lord just kind of busted me and said, you know, what are you doing? You know, and I, and I had to get my eyes off of my own situation a little bit. And my wife and I made a pact that day. We said, you know what? If, even if we, we feel like God never answers another prayer that we pray, let's worship him for what he's done in our lives. It doesn't matter. He's worthy to be worshiped for as long as I breathe because of what he's already done for me. And that's a really great place to get to as a believer because you're not, it's, your relationship with, isn't predicated on how good things are going in your own mind, you know? But to know that he has done these things for us is such a cause for worship and being grateful. And so I am. And my wife and I kind of, kind of made a pact that, like I said, no matter what, we're going to worship him no matter what it looks like. And so, you know, it was cool because not too long after that, the house sold. But in that, one morning I got up and I, I was reading a book by A.W. Tozier. I've told people, you know, if you feel good about yourself as a Christian, just read some Tozier and, you know, it'll just knock you right down, man. Just bam, praise God. Just edifying the brothers and sisters. with the Anyway, but I love his writings. I, I read a lot of his stuff. But I was reading a book about the character traits of God. I can't remember what the book was called, but it dealt with some of those things. And, and so one morning I got up and I had this idea for... I started writing down character traits of God that I liked and put them in a rhyming form, of course, just in case, you know. And uh, so my wife and I went through this whole deal with the real estate people and all that. And I said, you know what, honey, I've, I've had this chorus, not, not the part that I wrote down, but I had another part of a song, but I didn't have all the words to it, but I had the music. And I sang it to her. I said, have you heard me sing this around the house? And she goes, no. I said, man, I've had this for like six months. She's like, that's really beautiful. She goes, but, you know, if, if you just change these words right here, it'll be less, you know, I don't know. I think you won't lose so many people. It'll be a little more grasp. They'll be able to grasp it a little bit better. And I went, okay. So I changed those words. And then I realized, hey, those, the attributes that I wrote down, like just the like day before, go perfectly with the chorus of this song that I've had rolling around in my head for six months. Isn't that weird how God, you know, he just kind of waits for the other foot to drop. It's like, and there you go. And so, so I wrote the song and I produced it and it came out and it went number one on, you know, the Christian charts and stuff. And then I did tell people, well, you know, the little woman helped me write it, you know, stuff. <laughs> it's like, so close, you know. But anyway, um, this is a really cool song. It's called, uh, I Will Worship You. Mm -hmm. 
My God is faithful. My God is truthful. My God is boundless in all he is. My God is wisdom. My God is righteous. My my crown at your feet and I will worship you on bended knee my God is power my God is Ben.